What is up guys? Welcome to the Speed Dota Show. I'm your host, Speed Dota, and today we're going to be spending 10-15 minutes together. Uh, we're going to be watching Wyab on, on the Drow. Now, we're, this is a Guardian game. He's Guardian 4. Not a, not a fan of the channel. I, I don't know who this is, but I just want to talk about the carry role and, you know, spend, as I said, 10-15 minutes with you guys and talk about the carry role, talk about how you could be better as a player, what, what, you know, what decisions you're making that would cause you to be around this MMR bracket. Now, if you think this only applies to everything I'm going to say only applies to the Guardian bracket, you're out of your mind. Everything I'm going to say here could help you even if you were a, a, an immortal player right? It just is. I'm just going to talk about fundamentals and how to be better. Now, I do also want to mention that as a part of this channel, to wait to make it a little bit more interactive, I do want you guys, if you are friends with me on Discord, if you're not, my Discord friend ID is speed, that is with three E's, it's not speed with two E's, it's three E's, hashtag 3853. You can uh, DM me there. Uh, I, I, a lot of you guys did that for coaching. I've had uh, so many people sign up for coaching, which has been fantastic. Uh, I've gotten to talk to a lot of you guys, coach a lot of you guys. It's really been great. Most of you guys are having success as well. Um, I'm not going to name names right now, but uh, you know who you are. So thanks for signing up, guys. And also, what I want to do for this channel is, and I know this is a long intro, so a bunch of people have clicked off. <laughs> um, but I want to make it more interactive, more uh, like a community base where like with Game Leap, I did that with Guess the Rank, but I didn't do it as much. I want to do it, especially with this channel where I'm like looking at your games in particular. It's a smaller community at the moment. And so I think it's a good time for me to say, hey, message me on Discord. If you have a game you want me to look at, game you want me to criticize, I will do that. Typically, that's something I do actually for $60 where you can send me a replay and then I'll uh, I'll record over it and I'll send the, uh, the YouTube video to you privately, but the point is, is I want to do that for free for some of you guys, so message me on Discord if you're interested. Either way, let's get into it. All right, so I actually like his stick build here. Uh, I think I would like to see him rush a Wraith Band. The reason why I would like to see the Wraith Band rush this lane is, you know, the Quills do physical damage, gives you armor. Dry actually and it's four, only has four armor. It's really not that good. So... I would like to see that. And the attack speed's good, right? The, uh, the Wraith Band's good. <laughs> why does he keep picking his quap? Like, right off the... So, I don't know who this is, as I said, but there's always a couple things that are just so frustrating to me. One of them is just randomly pinging your teammates. If you're trying to lose the game, that's a great strategy to tilt them instantly. But, okay. First major thing I want to point out uh, is creep aggro. I just want to give you guys a quick demonstration of why he's really bad at this. Essentially, you don't want a 50-50 creeps in Dota. What I mean by that is you don't want to be auto-attacking for the CS at the same time they're trying to deny. If you do that for every single creep, you're going to have a very low CS score. You're going to have low last hits, right? So here, what I mean by that is he goes for the deny, whatever, right? You can't creep aggro for denies, at least not... You know what I mean, right? You can't creep aggro your own creeps. However, these creeps are about half HP. This is a time in which you want to creep aggro, Right? He's not in threat of dying, really, like, this guy is Fade Bolt, this guy can't kill him. He's not in threat of dying, so it's not it's not for that reason. The reason why is if you just try to CS the creep, Bristleback has currently nothing better to do than to try to deny the creep. So, Drow has two options. Hit the Bristleback, or pull aggro so that when the creep is about to die, it's far away from Bristle, and he can last hit it without it being contested. But he doesn't do either of this. He does the classic shitty play of stand still, walk to the left, which I don't know why you would walk to the left. If Rubik's good, he would consider hitting you here because you're going away from the wave. And then he tries to 50-50 the creep. Not surprisingly, he doesn't get it. He does get that one, but also not surprisingly, he doesn't get the following CS. And that's why when people are like, oh, my supports suck and they're AFK, I can't last it. It's like, yeah, they probably do suck and they probably are AFK. But also you haven't pulled creep aggro individually for last hits. You might've done it for defensive purposes, I, I've started to learn, as I've coached a lot of safe lane players, that they'll pull creep aggro if they think the lane's unplayable, but they'll never do it just in even lanes or even winning lanes to secure creep, uh, just secure last hits, as this is brutal to watch. Uh, come on. Come on. You got to prep that one. No. All right. All right. No, you're not going to get that either. Okay. Well, very unfortunate. Uh, if I have to give some advice as well, definitely get the last hits, guys. I know that's going to be a, a bit of an eye-opening one to some of you guys. You actually want to hit the creep. You want to hit it last. Uh, it's called last hit, not second to last hit or after the last hit hit. Uh, so try to get the last hit in particular. And yeah, so essentially, just to reiterate what he's doing wrong in this lane, Drow's a pretty linear hero, uh, at least early on. You want to hit them every single time there's no last hit or deny to get. You want to hit them, or you want to be pulling aggro for the individual CS. Because your damage, it's not bad, but with your mediocre damage and, and bad animation, um, 
or not great animation, it's just hard to last it. It's hard to last it anytime you're in a 50-50. So essentially, I don't like this guy's skill build. He's last hitting poorly. He hasn't pulled creep aggro. He's hit the bristle a total of zero times. I have not a single clue why I use multi-shot there. He's probably fine, actually. Oh, unless he tries to kill Rubik on his on his retreat. Okay, I don't know what I... Let's just move on to the mid game. Let's talk a little bit about team fighting. As I said, I'm going to keep this video brief. I just want to give a couple points per, you know, section of the game. So that's going to be the end of the lane. If you improve on those two things I gave you, you're way better than a Guardian player. You're probably Crusader Archon level at that point, just with that information. So one thing I will say that I do like that he does is getting into mid game. Why does he keep pinging this co-op, dude? It's actually so crazy. <laughs> um, he actually does stay in his lane, which I think is the correct play. He doesn't try to jungle. I mean, this positioning is absolutely heinous. If, you know, you're not level 6 and they have kill threat, just position on the north side of the tower, right? There's no reason for him to go close to them. If they're going to kill him, it's going to be from here, here, or here. Like, why would you ever walk here? You can last it from here. So, huge mistake on his part. Because these deaths, I mean, they're just so game losing. Also, I don't know why he's not buying boots. He's rushing a Falcon Blade, which is just such a mistake, right? It's a mistake. Even though the item's good, it's a fine drow item. It's just like you need to be able to disengage. You need to be able to kite out. You need to be able to chase down opponents. You just need to be able to play the lane, and you just can't do that. So actually, I, I will be straight up. I like that he places his own ward here. I really like that, actually. Like, yeah, it might be because he's tilted, but hey, I like it. I like that he pops the arcane ring near right away, and I don't mind the fact that he's jungling at this point. Do I think he should be jungling? No, I think he should have probably done quite well in his lane. Bristle doesn't pressure Drow particularly well. Bristle doesn't really pressure anyone particularly well. Uh, but yeah, but moving on. Yeah, I like that he's jungling. Like, as simple as it is, I'm glad that he left the lane. Instant buying the tome at minute 10. You know what? You know what? The lowest level on his team is five and a half. I don't mind it. I really don't. It's it's an effective use of the tome. Like, I genuinely don't mind it. it maybe it's toxic, but from a, from a winning the game perspective, I really don't mind that play. Uh, I think, by, like, Tome is a, uh, sorry, Drow is a hero that really takes advantage of the levels. Getting level 7 for the multi-shot buff is quite huge. So, yeah, I actually, I don't mind that. And he's just going to jungle it up. He's clearing out the camps. Kind of left some of the camps half HP. That was bizarre. I don't really know the reason why he would do that, as he's going to get run out of it. But, yeah, I don't mind this. He can't go bottom. He can't go top. He feels like he can't go top. He probably could have gone top if he was played better. But um, he's jungling, and, and really, that's okay. Like... Every, uh, up until now, he hasn't done anything great, but this is okay. All right, so as we get into the mid game here, we're 17 minutes in. He's farming it up. Uh, it's going for a shard before Dragonlance, which the reason why... Oh, shit. The reason why that's kind of bad or... Because it, it might seem okay, right? The reason why it might seem okay is the shard helps you farm. All right, uh, being able to explode the creeps is quite nice, right? It makes your farming efficiency just very good, especially with the multi-shot. But the problem is you just can't fight, right? You just can't fight. It's just not good for fighting. You need the Dragonlance for a bit of HP and, and to be able to keep your range. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but Dragonlance actually buffs the range of multi-shot, which makes that ability good as well. Now, I will say I really don't mind the fact that he's farming as much as he is. He's splitting the map quite effectively. Uh, he's taking the farm, and he's honestly catching up. He's second highest in terms of... Uh, CS, unfortunately, because of how bad his lane went, and he's 0-3, and his team has not taken a single tier 1 tower, his net worth isn't fantastic. It's actually the lowest of all the cores. But I will say, considering, as I said, how bad his lane actually is, and considering his team's 15 to 8, right, they're actually getting crushed, um, he's doing okay, right? Like, he's actually done a decent job of splitting the map. He's not very efficient when he's doing it, but he does do a decent job. Even here, he actually ends up baiting in the Slark. They get a duel, and this is partially because he's creating the split pressure. So all in all, I don't like this guy's overall gameplay, but this is pretty okay. It's pretty good, right? He's keeping the map open. He's uh, he's making sure his team doesn't just instantly get run over. Let's actually look at this team fight here. So he should go for the multi-shot just to help try to save the Legion. Okay, he didn't do it. He just TPs out. Damn. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I guess it's okay. So he TPs top. And yeah, he's going to farm out the wave. So I really don't mind this TP top. He gets the rotation to the bottom. Unfortunately, they lose the fight. It is what it is. And he heads to the top lane. Now, I, don't, I, I would be a little bit afraid if he pushes out too far because they should, if they're really good players, they should wrap into his jungle. But at this level, he should be okay. It's very unrealistic that he's going to get run at. The only thing that I really don't like that he hasn't done is farm the triangle. Um, Drow's typical farming rotation is just going to be the triangle. And the reason why is she can't, you know, she just can't defend herself too well. If she gets caught by a gank, there's a very good chance she's going to die. 
Um, and as a result, you'll spend most of your game, you'll see pros spend most of their games in the triangle, and there's good reason for that. You can clear the midwave pretty uh, safely, and you can kill the triangle reliably and safely as well. So as much as I do like him keeping the map open, and it's great to push in side lanes. If the enemy team shows top on five heroes, you should go to bottom, right? As the carry, you should keep the map open and take the farm. So I do like that, but he's not farming ancients at all. It's bad for your efficiency. It's bad because like, let's say he farms this creep wave. It's just like you're just taking creeps away from Slaughter and Legion. It might not seem like a big deal, but when you're trying to play to win the game, you're trying to optimize your farming efficiency as here he's not attack moving at all. You have it, it's 60% slow, 55% slow. Hit the guy and run away. Oh, man. He might die because of this. He's probably going to die. All right, decent TP chance. Might work. Okay, he should have popped this one before TPing. So that was quite disastrous. Didn't use Frost Arrows. They just tried to siege a tower. And this is also what I mean. He's just like, this doesn't make very much sense. Right? They they killed the Slark, which I get. Um, and honestly, this was a really well synergized play from the enemy. I'll keep it real. I didn't expect this either. Uh, but yeah, the, the slaughter just, I mean, the bristle goes in, he knows he's unkillable. He's got this like crimson. Oh, I love these builds, man. They're so funny. The, the crimson reaver is just a classic. It's just a, it's just a certified classic, man. The heart rush on bristle is always just a classic. It's like, yeah, I don't need a halberd. You know, I don't need a wand. I don't need a wind lace. I don't need an ax. Nah, just buy a heart, you know, I'm just trying to not die. Unfortunately, Drow actually wins this game, so I guess this build doesn't work out for the Bristle, but yeah, didn't really do anything correct there. He didn't uh, he didn't Q at all. He didn't attack move. He didn't pop his wand. He was on intreds the entire time. That was just that was just a mechanical disaster, unfortunately. All right, moving on to see what he does next. He runs mid instead of taking the direct path to the Ancients, so pretty inefficient. I don't know why he would just not run this way and, or instead of this way, but... Okay, he gets the Grobo, that's fortunate, as he's going to look to push in bottom. So, he's clearly a very greedy player, right? That's the way he likes to play the game, which, you know, has its value. In in Loma Mar, people are going to fight 24-7, so you, you do need to pick and choose your fights. For instance, here, he should run mid. Uh, because this team, like, this is a big thing people fuck up. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm the hard carry, I should farm the whole game. It's like, hey, you need to fight eventually, you need to win the, ga win the game for your team. You need, which you can do by farming, kind of, but eventually you have to help them out. Right, so for instance, they get a great sniper pickoff that you see them chasing, and you're you're at a decent timing. I mean, he's poor. Don't get me wrong. He is like a giga poor. Okay, apparently he's not that poor in relation to the other people. He's poor. But the thing is, he's got his D lance, which is like a big timing for draw. It makes the hero way stronger, like way 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 stronger. So I would have liked to see him show up here. I don't see why not. Right? They killed the sniper. A huge multi shot on the slark would take away half his HP here and help the slaughter turn. Right, they could they could skirmish here, they could fight. So I really don't like that he's just completely blind. And if he is gonna be blind, he should keep going, which okay, he does do. Now he's gonna show up mid. Unfortunately the slaughter doesn't chase in this case. I mean the bristle, so he doesn't get too much value out of it as actually they'll find the okay. Alright, good good little play there. I think chasing mid here is actually okay, because they might need his Brother, brother, hit for max range. What are you doing? Just click. Why are you gusting a bristle back? What the what is this gust? He just puts himself out of position to waste gust. Alright, I mean, he clicks him down anyway, so clicks him down. I don't know if this sniper's gonna die, he's level 17. Maybe he'll die, actually. Alright, they'll get the Rubik. Stop gusting! Oh my! Why does this guy just gust for no reason? He's one click away! Why are you trying to silence him? Just click him! Oh, sniper actually mans up. Holy! Pop your one! Okay, pops him one. Oh! Yes! Unbelievable. Alright. The Gust usage, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10 max. He gets 2 points for actually using the ability. 8 points lost for not using it in any sort of semblance of correctness. But, uh... Alright, pipe breaking out. So he will show up. Don't do this, guys. Like, yes, I understand he's trying to burst the Slark, but you have 500 HP. And even if he didn't have 5... Even if he was full HP, casting Hurricane Pike aggressively is so risky. Being able to push someone away from you... It's like the whole point of buying the item. Because you want to keep your ulti active, right? It's, it's also good to get the five hits off or whatever, but you want to keep your ulti active. And now he has to be so afraid, right? He can't keep going. He can't keep chasing, but whatever. Ends up not mattering there. Just don't make that a habit. The amount of aggressive four staffs I see in Loma Mar just makes me want to vomit in my mouth. It's so awful nine times out of ten. Right? Situationally, it's the right play to guarantee someone doesn't get off a Ghost Scepter or a Glimmer or a BKB or whatever. Like situational or Dark Pact or... Slark hold. like so, sometimes it, it is the right play, but most of the time it's not. 
So just be careful about it. All right, fight breaks out here. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, he just has this big, like, auto attack problem. And this probably happens to a lot of you guys. So when, like, the fight's breaking out, you need to not move forward. You need to play your max range. No matter what hero you're playing, nine times out of ten, you want to play your max range. Why? So that they can't kill you. You want to do your damage from as far away as possible so you're not in range of their spells. It's a very simple idea, but it's very important that you follow this idea. So when the fight breaks out here, the first thing I'd want to see him do is just cast the multi-shot. Auto-attacking would be okay here, um, but he's level 15. He's got the multi-shot cooldown, so he can use it multiple times in a fight. And I just want him to keep his range. I don't want him to get blinked on. I think Rubik has a blink. I don't want him to get blinked on. Just max range, cast the multi-shot. But he, like, walks forward. You see how he takes steps forward like that? It's so bad. And then, whoa, he four staffs his Zeus. That's a chad play. All right, very risky to use your four staff like that defensively as a, as a safe lane drow. But all right, kind of pays off there. It's not bad. It's not bad. Heads up player. Heads up players. He's got the butterfly queued up. It's actually, it, it's okay. I, I, don't, I don't hate it. As, wow, he is doing no damage to his bristle. All right, this fight coming up here is comically good fight execution. Outside of the fact that he once again aggressively four staffed, which is so sad. Uh... You know, fight breaks out, he hits the Slark. It's a simple but effective play. Just hit the first person you see. Don't go out of position. CM goes in, and he gusts pretty quickly to cancel out uh, any potential of the CM ulti. Picks up the kill, and what he does well here, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but when you're trying to kill someone as Drow, you actually generally want to auto first if you're trying to kill them from full, and they're already close to you. And the reason why is the multi-shot range is, is slightly higher than your attack range, so actually you want to use it at the end to make sure you can finish off the kill with your higher ranged um, damage source, if that makes sense, right? So hitting twice into a multi-shot is actually the correct uh, play here to keep himself uh, in, in position and finish off the CM. So that's really fantastic as uh, another aggressive force that, oh, he lives. He should have stayed around a multi-shot. It would have been a risky play, but he should have done it. He tries it now and he's going to get the job done. So honestly, I'll give him like a six out of 10 in that fight. Uh, eh, maybe like a 5 out of 10, but really not that bad. And I will say, I think one thing that this guy does is he, he is like pretty good about farming and pushing out waves. The problem is his team is kind of killing him, killing themselves the entire time. And sometimes he just does it too much, right? He never like, it's really odd. He does it. He kind of farms too much at the wrong times. Um, basically you just need to have very good map awareness of like what's going on around you. All right, we're going to see a high ground attempt here. Let's see what Yab can do. Will he force staff aggressively into the enemy base? There it is, yes! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go! Way to waste that force staff. Come on. That's how you dive the high ground and throw. Okay, goes for the gust. Doesn't connect, unfortunately. He's now standing pretty far up in the enemy base. We'll continue to walk away, which is good. He needs to be a little bit careful, but... Okay, sieging away at the base. Once again, needs to be a little bit careful about getting jumped by the Rubik lift. As he will get lifted in now. He's going to have to force staff away. Thankfully, he has it. Uh, fortunately, it came off cooldown from its previous usage. Goes for the gust, isn't going to connect. Could stick around for a multi-shot, max range here. No, we'll back off, which is fine. Probably the correct play here. So, okay, not too bad. Really, that was... Outside of the uh, fantastic usage of four staff, Kappa, please don't... That's not correct. Outside of that, uh, not bad, actually. Pretty okay, good disengage on the back end. This guy is such a problem, it's insane. Why did he... I don't understand how you developed this habit. Not like, surely he's died from aggressively force staffing like a million times at this point, right? Surely doing this has gotten him killed like 14,000 times. How does he do it every single time without fail? I actually can't believe it. I just like, I know this is supposed to be some educational video, but I'm just blown away with the fact that he just constantly dies because he's just melee range as drow. Like, I actually don't understand. Play it at range, guys. Like, and I, I know you might be like, oh, I, I don't do that. This has nothing, like, there's nothing to learn here. It's like, you probably still aren't playing at max range. You're probably not casting multi-shot as fast as you can, right? You're probably not kiting out. You're probably going a little bit too deep. So, for instance, here, I, I don't hate him chasing. I mean, I slaughter is going, but then from there, I mean, he's going to get, like, he literally stands still to hit the, hit the tier thing. Maybe it was a misclick. It might have been a misclick. But he doesn't have Hurricane Pike. Now he does, but it's too late. Shocker, he didn't have his item up, and he dies because of it. Also, one thing to note is this item build is not a defensive item build. He doesn't have Manta or BKB, and that's fine. I don't really hate it, especially at this level, but you need to play accordingly. If you're going to go a build like this, just don't be that aggressive, right? Stay in the back, let them dive your team, 
and then just pump out damage because you've went up glass cannon build. I, as I said, I don't hate the build. I think it's fine. The enemy team really lacks backline jump this game, so you can get away with it. You just forced to have to kill a creep wave. I can't. I can't take it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close this replay. So I can't take it. I can't take it. Why does he do it? I don't get it. Why does he do it? All right, he's gonna get the Aegis here. Good play. I love that they're rushing. Shard coming up probably for the slaughter. Maybe who knows? Um, okay. I just want to see him not force the high ground too hard. They do have a sniper. I really just want to see him play the max range and siege from max range. So he will do that here. It's good. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that he waits and doesn't walk up immediately. He can definitely kind of wait it out here. This fight's going to break out. Let's see how he approaches. So he's going to go in for multi-shot. Kind of a good idea here. Can hit on this of the Slark. So save this pike in that case. Good usage of the pike. You have to be a little bit careful. Just try to hit from the low ground. Now another multi-shot opportunity here. Perfect. Perfect. This is beautiful. Um, okay. Silver edges aggressively to try to kill the Bristle, which I think is okay. It's a key kill for him here. So he's going to get pelted down by the Sniper, unfortunately. But... Looks like because he got that Roshan earlier, he will be able to secure the fight. Bristle ball back. Uh oh, he can... Okay, he can silver away. Go for the cycle play. Try to kill him. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have worked, but I just want to see him do it. <laughs> Alright, last fight of the video. Um, so Legion wastes her Presti attack. It's not great, but okay. Once again, he doesn't ever... Oh, God, he can't walk up like this. Ah, oh, it's so ugly. If they just lift him into into their base and follow it up with the, some, um, you know, some nukes... He's just instantly going to get dropped to half HP with no way to heal. He has no lifesteal, no paladin sword. Like, they should just chip him so easily here. He even is going to get chipped pretty easily. Fortunately, they don't do it the right way. They commit with Bristleback instead of just, like, fade bolting him with a lift. I guess Sniper's dead, so it's, like, really a great time to go high ground. So I like that they're going high ground, right? Sniper's dead. It makes sense. Um, but you, you don't want to approach from the low ground. You want to hit the tower from as far away as possible so they can't just casually poke you down. Fortunately, it didn't matter there because they fucked up, but, you know, it definitely could matter as he'll just pelt down the drow. Good positioning, multi-shot here on the... Okay, very slow on the multi-shot to follow up the duel. Um, but, okay, not bad. Legion's gonna get lifted. Nothing you can do here. Oh, okay. Slaughter goes in. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think you lose this. Slaughter's too low, and he'll go down. But, all right. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, you learned. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Hopefully, you had a good time with me. I like making these videos where I just get to roast these people. I have no ill will against them. So if you're uh, the type of person who, for some reason, thinks I hate this guy or I have some reason why I'm flaming him, I don't. It's for fun. It's to learn. If you happen to be this guy and you're watching the video, I wish you the best. I uh, genuinely hope you play Drow again and you stop core staffing forward, and then I'll be a very happy man. Come back as real says the Slaughter. I don't think it is. I have a feeling you lose this game. In fact, I know you lose this game, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.